Okay, so now we're going to move on to transition matrices. Um, okay. Sorry. Um, so I skipped a slide. Yeah, so now we're going to be moving on to transitional matrices. So transitional matrices are just a way of sort of using the past and the patterns in the past to predict a future. Um, and so they can either be really simple matrix, um, transition matrices like this. So for example, if you're at position A today, you will go to position A tomorrow. And if you're at, for example, position B tomorrow, uh, today, you'll go to position C tomorrow. And then if you're at position C to that, um, today, then you'll go to position D tomorrow. So that's essentially you would read this type of transition matrix. So very similar to communication matrices. But these are the not the type of transition matrices that we really sort of use. Um, so I'll come back to this. Okay, so this is the sort of transition matrices that we would look like. And it's mostly used for like stuff like populations um, and other types of changes. And, it just you, and it's just used to sort of predict the change in the future. So for example, if we have, um, for example, two locations in a school, the oval and the canteen, um, what this um, network would indicate is that 30% of people would change their position from today to tomorrow, um, with, from oval to the um, canteen. So for example, if we had you know 10 people going to the oval today, um, so tomorrow, 30% of those will go to the canteen and 70% of them will stay at the oval. And if we look at the other way around, it would be 40%. So canteen, if we had, let's just say, 15 people at the canteen today, 60% of those are going to go to the oval tomorrow, whereas 40% of them are going to stay here. So that's how you would sort of um, and they'll usually depict it using these types of diagrams. So it might be two places, it might be three places. And then from there, we could convert this into a transitional matrix. And the way that we sort of use this matrix is we have a to and a from. And essentially, we just plot that information. So from, so going from to, to, um, to O, it's 0 0.7 because 70% um, are going to stay at um, position O or the oval and from C to O it's 0 0.3 so it's this one over here so O uh, sorry from C to O I think from C to O um, I think this is sort of like um, actually no sorry that makes sense so going from C um, to O it's 30% so hopefully that makes sense. And this is how we would sort of determine it. And then we would use state matrices. So this is sort of like a um, throwback to financial maths where we're using recurrence relations. So we would essentially use transition matrices to sort of predict the future or to sort of predict the number of people that we might have, for example, the oval or canteen over time. So after 15 days, after 10 days, after 20 days. So that's what we would, and I'll go through an example. So for example, in this matrix over here, um, we have um, the transition matrix that we just formed. Um, and the important thing to note is the columns always add up to one. Regardless of how many positions you have, the columns will always add up to one. So that's something really important to note and what we can love to test. Because they might give you an uncompleted diagram and give you something you know to fill in. Okay, so if we have initially 50 students at the Oval, so let's just say it's a Monday morning and we have 50 students at the Oval and 70 students at the canteen on day one. So then we use this initial state matrix or S naught. So the initial state, um, so for example, if we're using financial maths or referring back to financial maths, we might use V naught to, ref uh, to refer to, for example, the initial sum of money that we put in the bank. So same here, we have an initial state matrix. So initial, we have 50 at the oval and 70 at the canteen. And then if we want to find um, the sort of numbers of people on day two, we need to find what S1 would be. Because S0 is day one, S1 would be day two. So all we need to do is matrix, the transition matrix, 
multiply by the state matrix. And once we do that, we will get the S1 or the um, proportion of people or the number of people actually on day two. So we have 77 on the oval and 40 on the county. And we can do this for however many days we want. And for that, we would use the nth term rule. So it's very similar to financial maths. So it's really hard to use transitional, um, to use recurrence relationships. If you were to, for example, predict the number of people on after 50 days, because then you would need to find the first one, the second one, the third one. Instead, you can use t to the power of n times s to the power of n, or s to the power of zero. So the way that we would use this is if you want to find s to the power of n plus one, it would just be the transition matrix to the power of n times by the initial state matrix. So very similar to financial maths. Um, so for example, here we want to find the number of people on the sixth day. So that will be s to the power of six which is equal to transition matrix to the power of five times by the matrix. Again, you would, do, you would do this on your CAS. So very straightforward. Um, and then we'll have a look at the steady state. So the steady state is essentially the point. Um, so all, ma all transition matrices will reach a steady state. And the steady state is the point where the values stop changing. So after like maybe 50 days, the number of kids at the oval and the number of kids at the canteen are going to stop changing. It's going to be 80 every day and 40 every day. And that's also called equilibrium, where the values sort of reach a point where they don't change anymore. And all transition matrices will, are going to have this. And to find the um, steady state, what you need to do is find the sort of um, number of kids after like, oh, sorry, not the number of kids, but the number of um, the um, matrix after, for example, 50 days or after 51 days, like a really high number, usually greater than 50. And then you would find it, let's just say after 50 days, it's going to be 80, um, 80 students at the oval and 40 at the canteen. And then what you need to do is to prove that this is the state date, use, um, to prove that this is the steady, um, steady state, is that you would need to find the 51. So you would need to find the transition, uh, the state matrix on the very next sort of day. So the, um, the immediate after, so 51st day. And if that is the same, that means that this is the steady state matrix. So that's essentially how you would prove it. So you would find the steady, uh, the, the state matrix for a really high, um, for a really, um, late date, for example, after 50 days or after 51 days choosing a really large n value, and then we would find it for the consecutive n value. So if we chose 50, then we would need to find it for the 51st day. If we chose 60, then we would need to find it for the 61st day. If they're both the same, then that means we have a steady state matrix. Okay, and then we can also have culling and restocking. So what culling and restocking essentially is, is instead of it just being, um, you know, the same number of students at the oval and the canteen. Um, this is like the beginning of the school year and we're getting new students coming in every week or every day. So what might happen is some students might be removed. So that's culling when we're removing values after each sort of addition. So for example, if we were to relate it back to financial maths, um, if we have an annuity and we're removing a certain amount of money after each period, um, as we're taking a payment, that would be, for example, culling. We're taking a value after the interest is added. So sort of this exact same thing. So after the, um, so after day one, a certain amount of students might, you know, go away from the oval or the canteen. They might choose a different location completely. And some students might come in and might choose in either of those situations. And then the way that we sort of represent this is, um, so we have, for example, something like this. So after we find, um, for example, if we're finding S1, we have um, 25 cows being added. So 25 tan cows being added. Um, actually, I'll go through the whole example so we can understand. So a farm has 50 tan cows, 50 black cows, and 50 white cows. 
A transition matrix is provided below. Each generation the cows make and new quantities arise of each. So these new quantities of cows that are, um, that are being um, added are not the ones that we include in the culling or restocking. These are the ones that we would include. So 15 white cows that are being added or being um, purposely bought. So 15 white cows, 10 black cows are removed for selling and 25 tan cows are being added. So essentially it would look something like this. So we have the transition matrix. We would have the S naught matrix or the SN matrix. And the important thing to note for this is similar to financial maths. If you have something like this, you cannot use um, recurrence. Uh, you cannot use the nth term rules. You can't use t to the power of n. You'll have to use um, the recurrence relations. t s to the power of n plus a. So that a matrix would represent the change. So we're adding twenty five tan cows. We're removing. Um, 15, sorry, we're removing 10 black cows and we're also removing 15 black cows. So that's how you would write that down and then you can put it on your calculator to get the new value for S1.